Welcome to week 13 of the BTFL. We start off with the 89 Niners at the 85 Bears. Jim McMahon, he comes back from injury, replacing Mike Tomzak, who didn't win a single game. Speaking of replacements, Steve Young throws deep. He's replacing Joe Montana, and he gets his first touchdown of the season via John Taylor. It's 7 to nothing. Walter Payton, sweetness. He runs up the middle, and he makes it into 49ers territory, and then he gets the hand up to the right side. He slips through defenders, making it into the end zone. It's a tie ball game. Steve Young in the shadow of his own goalpost. He gets sacked and safetyed by Chicago. It's a 9-7 game. Emery Moret, he catches the Jim McMahon pass, making it close to the red zone. And Walter Payton, he vultures off of that for a touchdown. Steve Young, he winds up deep, giving it to his favorite target, John Taylor. And Tom shows off the wrath man, making it into the red zone. And then Steve Young, he throws it shallow to Roger Craig for the touchdown. It's a two-point ball game. Jim McMahon, he throws it deep to his deep threat, Willie Galt. And Willie Galt, he makes it into the red zone, and he would catch his own touchdown in the red zone. Kevin Butler, he knocks in a field goal, making it 26-14. Jerry Rice, the Hall of Famer, catches the deep Steve Young pass, making it into the red zone. And then Tom would show off the Wrath Man for a touchdown. Willie Galt, he's back to returning kicks, weaving through defenders. Get off me! He makes it into 49ers territory, and then Emery Moorhead catches the Jim McMahon rollout pass, making it into the red zone, and then Walter Payton, he catches the touchdown, 33-21. Brent Jones, he catches the ball from Steve Young, and then Jerry Rice, the Hall of Famer, catches the touchdown. It's a five-point ball game, but Walter Payton says, you know what, we gotta win one of these games because we haven't won in the last three weeks, and he powers it in for the touchdown. Chicago wins 40 to 28. Bears are five and seven. 49ers are four and eight. 91 Lions at 2,000 Ravens. We start off with a punt return by Priest Holmes, but he gets injured. He would be replaced by Jermaine Lewis. On that drive, Trent Dilfer, he loads up, throws it on the wheel route to Jamal Lewis. And nobody would catch Jamal Lewis, and he could go all the way for the touchdown. It's a 7-0 game. Jamal Lewis is second game back. Trent Dilfer throws it deep to Kadre Ishmael, and he has a touchdown. Nobody was in the picture to tackle him. Then another pass by Trent Dilfer to Shannon Sharp. The sharp-dressed man goes scoop right into the end zone. It's 21 to nothing. Three-possession game. Dilfer over the middle to Brandon Stokely, and this has to be the best game that Trent Dilfer has ever played in his career as he gives another wheel route pass to Jamal Lewis. Celebrate there, Trent Dilfer. It's a four-possession game. And Rodney Pete, he's allowed by the Ravens to throw deep to Robert Clark, and Robert Clark makes it close to the red zone, and Eddie Murray knocks in a field goal, and they break the shutout. Onside kick by the Lions. They need to recover. Ravens recover the ball, and Trent Dilfer gives it over the middle to Brandon Stokely, and then passes to Shannon, sharp-dressed man, getting it into the red zone, and Jamal Lewis pounds it into the end zone for the touchdown. Ravens win 38-3. They're 6-6, six and, six, and Lions are the last place team in the NFC. 69 Chiefs at 68 Jets. We start off with Len Dawson running out of the pocket. He throws it over the middle to Robert Holmes making it into Jets territory, but then Len Dawson makes a mistake, throwing an interception down the right side to Bill Baird. Jets don't do anything with that, and on the next drive, Mike Garrett, he gets the handoff. Mike Garrett had five touchdowns last week. He makes it into Jets territory, and Fred Abraras, he catches it over the middle, and then Frank Arm Pitts, he gets the touchdown at seven to nothing. Joe Namath, he rolls out, he throws it over the middle to Don Maynard. And after the drive stalls, Jim Turner makes the field goal. It's a four-point ball game. Mike Garrett, he gets the direct snap, and he goes over the middle, making it deep into Jets territory. After the drive stalls, Jan Stenerud makes the field goal. It's a seven-point ball game. Don Maynard, he catches the contested pass from Joe Namath. And then Matt Snell, he catches the pass, gets it into the end zone for the touchdown. Game is tied. Mike Garrett, again, he gets the handoff. Showing off the speed, making it into Jets territory, and Stenerud makes another field goal after the drive stalls. 
Off the punt return. The ball is recovered by the Chiefs, and the re returner fumbles, recovered by the Jets, and they get the touchdown. It's a four-point ball game now. Otis Taylor, he gets the ball over the middle, and then Stenerud misses the field goal after the drive stalled. George Sauer, he catches the deep pass from Joe Namath, and the Jets score a touchdown. It's an 11-point ball game now. Frank Armpitts catches the pass from Len Dawson, and Mike Garrett, he ends up getting into the end zone for a four-point game. Chiefs onside kick. Jets recover. Jets win 24-20. Both teams are 6-6. Six and six. 06 Colts and 99 Jaguars AFC South battle here in Duval. Mark Brunel starting this game off going deep. He's intercepted by Bob Sanders. Peyton Manning rolling to the outside. Finds Marvin Harrison over the middle and he'll get down to the red zone. Fourth and one. Interesting call here by the Colts. A direct snap to the up back there. They hit it. That is stiffed out and no points for the Colts. Manning trying to go to Brandon Stokely. That pass is intercepted. Mark Brunel, however, gives it right back on his second interception of the day. Peyton Manning going over the middle to Brandon Stokely. He threads the needle, and he gets into the end zone. 7-0 Colts. Mark Brunel trying to get the Jags back in this stop. You've heard this one before. Bob Sanders with yet another pick, and Adam Vinatieri will bang this one through. 10-0 Colts. Mark Brunel, who's been a turnover machine thus far, just coughs another one up. This time a fumble. It's on the ground, picked up by the Colts' Marlon Jackson, and he'll get into the end zone, and that'll make it 17-0 Colts. Brunel deep downfield to Kyle Brady, and look at this catch. Z pulls it in in field goal range, and that one clanks out. More bad news for the Jaguars. Peyton Manning back to pass. Pressure in his face, finds Reggie Wayne on a diving catch. Vinatieri, this one goes through 20-0 Colts. Mark Brunel, not a lot of time left in this game if the Jags want to get back in it. Going deep to Jimmy Smith as he will make a diving catch and get in the end zone, breaking that goose egg for the Jaguars, putting their first score on the board. Not a lot of time left. Goes for the onside kick, and they don't get it. Colts by 20. 04 Patriots at 90 Bills. Start off with Tom Brady giving it to Super Bowl 39 MVP Dion Branch. Close to the red zone, but Tom Brady, he play action fakes it. He has plenty of time to throw, but he's sacked by Daryl Talley, and this would lead to a made Adam Vinatieri field goal. It's 3-0 Patriots. Jim Kelly, he would throw an interception to tie, laying down the law, and they won't catch him today. Ty Law has a touchdown. It's 10 to nothing. And then Tom Brady throws it to David Givens. All the Givens he could get for a touchdown. It's 17 to nothing. Jim Kelly finally gets it started, throwing a diving catch to his receiver, Andre Reed. And then Thermal Thomas, he gets the run, shifting run over the middle to around the 30. And then the field goal would be made by Scott Norwood. It's 17 to 3. Tom Brady, he loads up, winds up giving it to the best running back he ever had, Corey Dillon, as he makes it into the red zone. But Tom Brady, he play action bootlegs, gives it to General David Patton for the touchdown. It's 24 to 3. Celebrate Tom Brady. And then Jim Kelly throws it over the middle to Rodney Harrison. Last ditch effort. Jim Kelly sacked by Randall Gay and the Patriots win 34-3 after quite a few safeties by the Bills. 98 Broncos at 72 Dolphins. We start off with Bob Greasy throwing it deep down the right side to Paul Warfield, making it close to the red zone. And then Bob Greasy, he throws it to the left to Mercury Morris, avoiding tacklers for the touchdown. It's 7-0. Next drive, Bob Greasy throws it to the left side again in the flats to Mercury Morris. And he's avoiding defenders again, making it inside the red zone, and Morris would power it in for a touchdown. Ebron, he gets the punt return, weaves through defenders. He gets tackled. It's a fumble recovered by the Dolphins. And then Bob Greasy, he says, I'm going to do this myself, and he gets it in. 21 to nothing, Dolphins. Not to get upstaged by Greasy. John Elway says, let me show off the wheels and the mobility, getting it to the 50. And Derek Lowville, he makes it inside the 30-yard line, getting it close to the red zone. But Elway makes a mistake, throwing an interception to Curtis Johnson. And Curtis Johnson makes it close to midfield. And Garrow Yapremian makes the long field goal, 24-0. Elway is intercepted by Tim Foley. He's intercepted again. And then Yapremian makes the field goal, 27 to nothing. John Elway, he says, I'm just going to chuck it deep to my receiver. Ed McCaffrey, give him the salute, getting him inside the red zone. 
and then Jason Elam knocks in the field goal. It's 27-3. Bob Greasy rolls out of the pocket. He gives a deep contested catch by Paul Warfield, and Warfield would catch it again in the end zone. It's a touchdown, 34-3. Dolphins eventually went 52-3 in a massacre against the Denver Broncos. 0-2 Buccaneers and 96 Packers. Antonio Freeman comes back from injury. Brad Johnson tried to toss it back, but it's a fumble picked up by Craig Newsom, who had taken in for a Packers touchdown. Brad Johnson would try to make up for his mistake by rolling to his left and getting it to Dilger, who would make it to the 45-yard line of the Packers. And then Brad Johnson would take it himself and he would make it all the way to the 20 yard line, but it would all be for naught, as in typical Buccaneers fashion, the field goal is no good. Edgar Bennett takes the ball and makes it all the way nearly to the 50 yard line. Brett Favre, under center, takes the ball, but he is sacked almost immediately by Singleton. Brad Johnson gets it to his receiver, and this time the field goal is good. Seven to three. Johnson from his own end zone gets it to McCardell who would take it a long distance until he nearly reaches the Packers 40 yard line and then Johnson on the run gets it to Dilger who would take it even further but Martin Gramatica would miss another field goal it's illegal to make field goals in Tampa as Brett Favre as he's hit gets it to Robert Brooks for the home run pass as Robert Brooks nobody would catch him it's a touchdown for the Packers and then Brad Johnson from the pocket, throws it, but it's intercepted by Newsom. Favre would take advantage of the short field and get another touchdown to Robert Brooks. Johnson from the pocket, he would get it to Pittman for the touchdown. They had to get the onside kick though, as they would not do that and the Packers would win. Green Bay is red hot right now. 98 Vikings at 2016 Falcons rematch of the 98 NFC Championship game and Devontae Freeman comes back from injury finally. Matt Ryan on the second drive he throws deep to Justin Hardy and he won't be caught today. Justin Hardy has the touchdown. It's a 7-0 ball game. Randall Cunningham he runs out of the pocket not to be upstaged. Throws it deep to his Hall of Fame receiver Chris Carter and Chris Carter has the touchdown. Game is tied 7-all. Matt Ryan, he throws an interception to Jimmy Alfred Hitchcock. And Gary Anderson adds a field goal. David Palmer, he gets the punt return. He weaves by defenders, making them look foolish. Getting the ball into Falcons territory near the red zone. And Randall Cunningham throws a touchdown to Randy Moss waiting in the end zone. It's 17-7. Matt Ryan, he throws it to Justin Hardy, but he fumbles. Ball's recovered by Orlando Thomas. And Chris Carter, he catches another touchdown pass from Randall Cunningham. Chris Carter, he catches every ball that comes to him, basically. And he gets another touchdown. That's his third touchdown of the game. It's 30-7. to Last ditch ever for the Falcons. Matt Ryan, he gets sacked. He fumbles. Recovered by Ed McDaniel. And then Randall Cunningham, he fumbles. But this time it's recovered by running back Robert Smith. And he won't be caught today and could go all the way for the touchdown Vikings win 41-14 this game escalated quite quickly 2012 Texans at 99 Titans this game starts out with Matt Schaub throwing an interception in the end zone to Samari Roll and Steve McNair would give it right to his receiver Kevin Dyson gets it close to the 20 and after the drive stalls Al Del Greco knocks in a field goal Steve McNair the give to Eddie George on the handoff, making it into Texas territory, but then McNair is sacked, and he fumbles. Ball is recovered by Brooks Reed, and Brooks Reed makes it close to the red zone. Matt Schaub then on the next play gives it in the end zone to Andre the Giant Johnson waiting for the ball. Steve McNair would throw an interception to Kareem Jackson, and then Arian Foster's freeze would make it into Titans territory and would eventually get the touchdown. Arian Foster's freeze again gets the ball. He fumbles after being tackled. Ball is recovered by Dane and Sydney. And then Eddie George would power it into the end zone for a touchdown. Eddie George gets the catch from Steve McNair. He makes it into Texans territory into the red zone. And then Frank Wycheck waiting for the ball for the touchdown. Titans take a three point lead. Matt Schaub gives it to Kevin Walter, and Kevin Walter weaves by defenders. There is one second left in the game, and Shane Graham makes the field goal. 
overtime rules. Usually the team that gets the ball first wins. Keyshawn Martin, he catches the pass from Matt Schaub and he gets it past midfield. And then Schaub gives the ball to Arian Foster's freeze. Fourth and one, they could kick the field goal, but they decide to go for it. And Dayton Sidney sacks Matt Schaub. The game ends in a tie, 17 all, and this is the Texans' second tie of the season.